All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about how to take the integral of a quotient. But this is already something we have some experience with, right? If you look at the one on the left, we know how to deal with this. We can rewrite 1 over e to the x as a negative power of e. And we can say, all right, I know how to take the antiderivative of that. It's going to be e to the negative x. I'm going to have to multiply by negative 1 to prepare for the chain rule. And I'm going to have to we know how to do that. The one in the middle, we can divide through by x to the negative two, or by x to the 2 or multiply by x to the negative 2. We can say that that's equal to x to the negative 1 plus 4x to the negative 2. And we can try to use the power rule. Okay, this isn't going to work. So oh, yeah, that's log the absolute value of x. Plus, and then add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, I'd have negative 4x to the negative 1 plus c. And then this third one, this is also a fraction, but we're looking, we're seeing, oh, this is a composition of functions, square root of sine theta, and the derivative of the inside of the composition is appearing on the outside with multiplication, so that's going to be our UDU pattern. And I'll just show you how that And if you need to take a second to pause and look at that, and think it over, you can do that. But I'm going to move on to stuff we don't know how to do yet. So here's a fraction integral that we have not dealt with so far this year. x to the 4 plus x to the 2 minus 3x plus 5 all divided by x minus 2. Okay, we've done some where, you know, we're dividing and, you know, we could cancel the x minus 2, but x minus 2 is not going to divide this cleanly. We can't factor the numerator. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use long division. Now, in AP calculus, you usually, I mean, pretty much don't have to use long division. We can use synthetic division for that. So what I'm going to do is 1x to the 4, I'm copying the coefficients, 0x to the 3rd, that's what you have to remember about synthetic division. Is that if there's a missing power, we still have to put in the 0. 1x to the 2, negative 3x to the 1, and 5. And I'm going to divide that by x minus 2. And inside that box, we would put whatever would be the 0 of the denominator. And this does only work, you know, this way for when it's just x minus a number, x plus a number. But for the most part, I think that's what you're most likely to see in, you know, multiple choice, no calculator. So I'm going to drop this down here, multiply by 2, okay, then add down and multiply again. Okay, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. In algebra 2, we usually you know, put a box around with that. But what this means is that this quotient is equal to 1x to the third, right? Because if I take x to the four and I divide by x, I'm going to get you know, something kind of related to x to the third, plus 2x squared plus 5x plus 7. The remainder is 19, and remember the remainder goes over the divisor. I think that's x minus 2. And this is something that we would be much more easily able to take the antiderivative of, right? We could just use the power rule. So I'm going to say this is 1 fourth x to the fourth, 2 thirds x to the third, 5 halves x to the 2, 7x. And then this thing over here, this would be like 19 times x minus 2 to the negative first power. So if I tried to do the power rule on it, it would be divided by 0. It's like, oh yeah, that's going to be 19 times the log of the absolute value of x minus 2, and then add c. Okay, And the big thing about this that we need to be able to recognize is going to be if we're integrating a fraction that is bigger on top, we're going to need to do, use long division before we anti differentiate. Okay, and that's going to be the dead giveaway. If it's bigger on top, we're going to use long or synthetic division. All right, now you should try this on your own. Okay, try to run this integral. I added some bounds to it, but it, you know you know what to do once you get an antiderivative. You've been taking integrals in this class for quite a while now. So I want you to recognize that this is bigger on top, so I'm going to need to use long division. You can use long division if you want. It just takes longer. Or you can do synthetic. And you should pause the video, work it yourself, and then check your answer against mine, because it's just going to pop up in a couple seconds. All right, there you go. So I ran that quotient through synthetic division, got 1x to the third, 0x squared, negative 2x's, and 3, and then 2 over x plus 1. Okay. I anti-differentiated, plugged in x equals 1, plugged in x equals 0. 
Okay, remember over here that I'm taking log of 1, that's the log of write it as a power of e, e to the 0, and the log of e to the 0 is going to be 0. Okay. And so that's where I got 1 fourth minus 1 plus 3, that's 9 fourths, plus 2 log 2, and then minus 0. Okay. So that's how I did that. All right, now the next type of fraction we need to be able to integrate is one that, you know, if we look at it right now, there's not really anything we're able to do with it. If this was, instead of 3x minus 14, 2x minus 7 in the numerator, we'd have that u prime over u pattern. We could use the u substitution, we'd be good to go. But that's not what we have. Okay, we're going to need to be able to break this down into two different fractions. Now, some of you may have seen this before in an algebra class or a pre-calculus class, and some of you may not have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by reminding you of how we put together two fractions of the common denominator. All right, so on the right, you know, suppose I wanted to subtract those two things from each other, 5 over x minus 3 minus 2 over x minus 4. What I would need to do is make sure that they had the same so that I could add them together. So I'll just multiply both of them by some form of 1. And then I'm going to add them together with that common denominator. And so when I actually do that subtraction, I'll have 5x minus 2x is 3x, negative 20 plus 6 is negative 14, all divided by x squared minus 7x plus 12. So what I'm seeing is that, you know, if I know how to break this apart into separate fractions, I can rewrite this integrand as 5 over x minus 3 minus 2x minus 4. But the question is, like, well, how did you know how to do that? Like, how did I, I started with the answer. And so now I'm going to show you how to do this in reverse, which is what we're actually going to need to be able to do in this class. So you're going to look at this integrand. And you're going to look at the denominator. And you're going to say, hey, this is something I know how to factor. I can break that up into x minus 3 and x minus 4. So I'm going to say 3x minus 14 divided by well, x minus 3x minus 4 can be split up into the sum of two fractions. So it's going to be some number divided by x minus 3 plus some other number divided by x minus 4. Now we know that this is going to play out so that a is 5 and b is negative 2, but I'm just showing you how you would come to this if you didn't already know that. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by both x minus 3 and x minus 4. And we know that if we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 3 and x minus 4, we need to multiply everything, all of those terms. And then we're going to see, oh, a lot of this stuff will cancel off, right? And that's the reason why we did it, was so that we could get rid of all of these denominators and get an equation that is much easier to work with. And so this means that 3x minus 14 is equal to a times x minus 4, where a is the number that goes over x minus 3 eventually, plus b times x minus 3, where b is the number that's eventually going to go over x minus 4. Okay? And this equation is true for all x. Okay? So if it's true for all x, it'll be true for convenient x's like, say, x equals 4. We'll let x equal 4. Okay, when I plug in x equals 4, I get 12 minus 14 is negative 2 equals a times 0 plus, okay, 4 minus 3 is 1 times b. Okay, so that means to me that b equals negative 2. And then I'm going to choose another convenient x. I'm going to choose x equals 3, really whatever makes those factors against the a and the b equal to 0. So when I plug in x equals 3, I get 9 minus 14 is negative 5, and that's going to be 3 minus 4 is negative 1a, plus 3 minus 3 is 0b. So if negative a is negative 5, that means that a is equal to 5. Okay. And now I know that 3x minus 14, you know, using b equals negative 2 and a equals 5, I can you know, get rid of those and write them in. a was 5 and b was negative 2. And once you do that, then your integral becomes much easier. Okay. This becomes... 5 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2 logs of the absolute, let's get rid of that, log of the absolute value of x minus 4 
plus C. And that's a good solid example of integrating with partial fraction decomposition. All right, here's an example for you to try on your own. You get the integral from 2 to 3 of 4 over x squared minus 1 dx. And, well, you look at x squared minus 1, and you say to yourself, hey, I know how to factor that. That's x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I'm going to say that this is that 4 over x plus 1, x minus 1 is equal to some number over x plus 1 plus some other number divided by x minus 1. And now I want you to try to figure this out yourself. So you should pause the video, try to break this down into partial fractions, figure out what a and b are, and then check your answer against mine because it's about to pop up. Okay, there you go. So now that you've got it down to a equals negative 2 and b equals 2, we're going to rewrite this over here as the integral from 2 to 3 of a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 1. Now, I want you to take it the rest of the way. Try to integrate this, get an antiderivative, plug in the top, plug in the bottom, subtract, and then check your work against mine again. All right, there you go. So you know, we found an antiderivative, negative 2 log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 2 log of the absolute value of x minus 1. We're going to plug in x equals 2 and x equals 3, and we're going to subtract. And then again, it's going to be important for you to know that when you're taking the log of 1, you're taking the log of e to the 0, and that is 0. Hey, this is almost always multiple choice, no calculator. And if that's the case, then you're going to have to be able to evaluate logs and powers of e because they're just going to do that for you in the answer choices. What you don't have to do anymore is know the log properties. Okay, that's not something that they are testing you on in AP Calculus anymore because they woke up and realized it was a calculus test, not an algebra test. But there are some multiple choice questions you know, in AP Classroom, the old ones, that, where the answer choices have applied log properties. So I'm just going to remind you of that real quick. Okay, so log properties that you, know, you might should know, but it's not absolutely essential for AP Calculus because these days for this type of problem, you know, they're going to be giving you the answer choices looking like that, right? Okay. What they are, though, is that the sum of the logs is the log of the product of the arguments. We can also apply that to the difference, right? Log of a minus log of b is the same as the log of a divided by b. And this power property, k times the log of a is log of a to the k. Okay, these properties all follow directly from exponent properties. And if you're interested in why this is true, you can go search for, uh, I've got a video on log properties in my college algebra playlist, and I go through it and kind of explain why all these things are true. What used to happen is, you know, say that up here, this previous example, was a an indefinite integral, right? And so we were talking about, really, I'm going to just grab this antiderivative and work with it for a quick second. Okay, what used to happen is if, you know, we were just looking for an antiderivative and so we had this, what the answer choices would look like would be, you know, something like 2 times the log of the absolute value of x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 plus c, or even log of x minus 1 over x plus 1 to the 2 power plus c, but that doesn't happen anymore. Okay. But, you know, in case you go looking at old multiple choice questions and you see answer choices that look like this, this is how you get to those. And now, moving forward, you need to know how to recognize when do I use the partial fraction decomposition technique. And it's pretty easy to recognize. The dead giveaway is going to be that the denominator of the fraction factors nicely. Okay, and more than that, it needs to factor into two distinct linear factors. Okay, so it needs to be, you know, like x plus something, x minus something, x plus something, x plus something. It could be 2x plus 1, x minus 3, or something like that. But that's pretty unlikely, because I think the factoring that you have to do should be pretty basic. All right, so in conclusion, we need to be able to recognize a couple of different things based on what we've learned today. Okay, we need to recognize that some of them we're just going to hit with algebra the old way, right? We're just going to use the distributive property on this one. 
Okay, and then that ends up resulting with an x to the negative 2 plus x to the negative 3, and we can use the power rule, right? We, we're good at that. Okay, this one over here in the middle, it's bigger on top, so I'm going to need to use long division. Me personally, I'm probably going to use synthetic division. Okay, but, you know, if it's bigger on top, we have to divide first before anti-differentiate. And then this one on the right, it's bigger on the bottom, so it's not going to be long division, okay? And it's not just a single term, so I'm not just going to be able to use the distributive property. But I look and I see that this is factorable, so I know I'm going to need to use partial fraction decomposition. Okay. And that's really all I've got to show you. For this video, I am going to do a couple more examples, but I'm just going to put them up real quick so that you can practice if you need it. All right, give these a try. Pause the video, try them on your own, and then check your work against mine. I'm going to put that up in like five seconds. All right, there you go. So you'll see that these are two examples of multiple choice questions that are old, where they've applied some log properties. And I'm telling you that these days, that's not going to happen. Okay. The, that used to be something they emphasized, and it has just not been emphasized lately. I've seen some questions where they'll just, you know, it would be half of log of 2 plus log of 4 minus log of 3. They would not combine the 2 and the 4 at, at this point in time. And same for the, for the second one I did in blue. They would just leave it as one third log absolute value x minus 1 minus one third log absolute value of x plus 2. They wouldn't combine them into a single fraction. So if you're looking at some of those old multiple choice questions, that's, that's really what's going on there. Okay, now these last two examples are two that we need to be able to do, but they aren't going to require partial fractions. Okay, the first one is just dividing by a single term, so I'm just going to write that at the integral from 1 to e of x squared over x minus 1 over x dx, which I can rewrite as the integral from 1 to e of x minus 1 over x and then, you know, when I do that, I get myself an antiderivative. Wait, pardon me. Minus the log of the absolute value of x as x runs from 1 to e. Okay, so that's going to be 1 half e to the 2 minus the log of e minus 1 half of 1 squared minus the log of 1. And then I'll get e to the 2 minus 3 halves, and that's going to be answer choice e. There it is. Right there. Okay, and then the last one, this is one that we kind of just have to know. We have to look at this and we say, oh, okay, 1 over 1 plus x squared, I've got an antiderivative for that. And 5 over 1 plus x squared, well, that's just 5. I can factor out the 5. 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And that's going to be 5 times that antiderivative is arctangent. And that's why it's going to be answer choice D. So don't forget about those derivative rules and antiderivative rules that you just have to know. Okay, those are important too. But that's all the examples I have for you for this video. Thanks for watching.